Lions are still in first place by two games with four to go. Level of concern. They'll play primetime against Denver Saturday. High to very high. Okay. I mean, we talked about this headed into this game. Now you're down to Lee McNeil, who's one of the five best defensive tackles in football. They're going to play four mobile quarterbacks here on out. Now, depending on what Minnesota does here, is Mullins your first time, mm-hmm. is your full time starter or not? Listen, they're losing to the Cowboys. Sure. Okay. So you, your magic number is, well, you have four games left. You need to win two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're losing to the Cowboys. So you should split one with Minnesota minimum. Yeah. Should. Here's the other problem, Jim. I think they're losing to the Broncos. That's what makes this week. This is the whole kit and caboodle for me. You lose this, now you've backed yourself into a corner. Because now let's look at the Lions overall. Forget about preseason, early Mm -hmm. This is where we are. What do they do well right now? As of today, not a whole hell of a lot. Penalties? Mm -hmm. Bad. Turnovers? Bad. Mm -hmm. Quarterback throwing like a child? Bad. Offensive line and pass protection? Bad. Defense in some total, bad. Fourth and 13. Uh, Need I say more? No, 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 no. Here's the other problem. I'm going to go on the air today, and the first caller who brings up, that should have been intentional. intentional. Here's an idea. Aiden Hutchinson, wake the fuck up. It's fourth and 13, and they don't plan on running a play. So don't jump. You jumped off sides. They snapped the ball. Mike. Then he dropped into coverage. If you were dropping into coverage to Why begin with, jumping? what the hell are you doing? Here's so, the other problem. How do you have Jerry Jacobs on DJ Moore with no solo, safety help? Solo. Cover one, your safety's not helping him. It's the worst corner against their best receiver. Oh, deep, deep on fourth and long. If I bracket DJ Moore, who's beating me? Seriously. It, I mean, it's it's from a coaching standpoint. Why is that the play call? From a personnel standpoint, the players, what are you doing? Can I bring something up? And, and I don't want you to yell at me. I'll try my best. Okay. I am fine with Dan Campbell's aggression. I have come to grips with it. However, first of all, if it's fourth and inches with 12.30 to go and I'm down 12, Mm -hmm. you tush push, we Mm -hmm. get the first one. This was fourth and a yard and a half. I'm inside my own 25. It's not the Niners. It's not the Ravens. It is the Chicago Bears. If you're desperate enough to go for that, and by the way, big personnel, and you run a toss play. It wasn't a toss. It was a handoff. But it, it was, was a slow development. Okay. It, and it, that's it, the It issue. was almost like an outside zone. It, it kind of was. There was a little like <laughs> little yeah. misdirection. All right. How about this? Let's just settle it as we're not doing anything off tackle. I don't have Trent Williams. Well, you, you run it Brock right. I don't get it. Mike, I... It, it's better than a fake punt. It is a yard. You allegedly have a great all line. I didn't have an issue with the decision to go for it. I just wish the play call was better. I Can be, we meet in the middle there? I'll meet you in the middle, and all I will say to you is, if that is your best play call, then the decision to go for it's null and void. Right. I'm with you. They pulled Jonah Jackson. They did run to Panay Sewell, but the play was not a good decision no. with the slow developing, and you got your backup and tight oh, by end the way, set in the edge. Where's David Montgomery? Yeah. So you, it just, Jim, for me, this Dan Campbell thing, they're okay. Did you see the line, by the way, for this week? Four. Lions favored by four. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You no, have a Dan Campbell thing you're, you were you're say. fine. I think meeting in the middle on this is multiple facets. So this is my issue with some of the analytics. They don't take into account who's the quarterback on the other side. They don't take into account injuries. And I, I just feel like Campbell needs to get a better handle. So let me give you an example. The game where this Dan Campbell analytics guru was born was two years ago against a Super Bowl caliber team on the road, YOLO, at the Rams. Yeah, onside kick. I think fake punt, too. You were playing the Rams. Mm-hmm. You're a touchdown under there. Or like the Chiefs week one. Right. Fake punt on the road. But when you're when you're in the game and you and you you got to be able as a coach to step back in the moment and go, all right, these are the Bears punt the ball. Yes. Or the alternative though is you're putting your defense back on the field, which is no right, good, which I think is backed him into a corner. Factor in Justin Fields can't complete a pass. Factor in this, I don't have Frank Ragnow. Yeah. See, this is where and and you may say, Mike, you're overstating. No, it's a big deal. Ragnow, Glasgow is not a center. You're missing the the tip of the spear on both sides of the ball right now. That's right. So if my line is healthy, if I'm all systems go, 
I actually go towards your way of thinking. Now, I still don't like the play call. Sure. But my, that, that, that's the whole, the whole thing is you have to take into account who's on the field mm -hmm. for the decision you're making. I got you. That's where I get upset with this cat. To circle back, you are a high level of concern. I will be right there with you if they lose this week. Okay. Because I still feel like you're favored at home. You still have the two-game cushion. I, I don't want to be breathing in, into a paper bag yet. Am I wrong in saying it's a one-game cushion because you're losing to the Cowboys? Jim, they're not beating One-game cushion with head-to-heads in your division. Now, here's the thing. Last piece. Is Nick Mullins an upgrade from Josh Dobbs? I don't know. He's less mobile, which is the concern for Lions yeah, fans. Except here's the good part. He actually is interested in completing a pass. And, and Josh no, Dobbs, when, when the first guy's not open, it's zap and I'm running around. Wee! And you're like, oh, my God. That was a hey, nice football game. And, and a quarterback that can scan the field is going to eventually find Jerry Jacobs. Yeah. Now, I, I'm like, I'm convinced his full name is got to step on Jerry Jacobs because that's how he's referred to in every single radio and TV call. Oh, got to step on Jerry Jacobs. Got to step on Jerry. He's never on the guy. He's the worst corner in football. Is that going to be a key and peel sketch? <laughs> Got to step on Jacobs. Jack Macatrix, Buck Shank McGill the third. Anyway, no, I'm, I'm I know, I know it's something that we are hyper focused on here, but it is a big storyline because you have the Packers playing softer opponents. Here's you have the, the Vikings problem. hanging around. Let me let me say this. Let's just get this out of the way right now. If you're the three seed and you face the six seed Packers. You're losing that game. And it's going to break my heart. Ali it's McNeil gonna... should be back by then. Is he? He has indicated that he <laughs> would be back when he's eligible off IR, which is week 18 against the Vikings. Houston back. That's the other question. And Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. So I'm, I get what you're saying. I'm terrified. I know. And I'm terrified because here's the deal. If they're back, but Jared Goff's not playing better, how about Taylor Decker? How many weeks am I going to watch him get steamrolled at left tackle? So you tell me the, the golf thing. Like, uh, smarmazon cheese here. I, I could be incredibly smarmy today. You uh, have every right to be, and all I will tell you is this. I'm not arguing it. Okay. He has five games for you to be right or wrong, okay. meaning the four in the regular season and the playoff game. Mm -hmm. Anything short of them winning the division and winning a playoff game, I will buy smarmazon cheese. And sprinkle I, it on top. Yeah, here's what happens. I'm not paying you. Good. Then you'd be with me. It'd be yeah, beautiful. But, but I, I, in in a way, it was like I didn't want to have the conversation coming off of last year the way he played. Yeah, I know. Then I looked at the first eight weeks of this year, and he was playing not MVP, but very, playing, very well. Playing really I'll, good football. No, I'm not fighting. But that. when you collapse down the stretch, and you cost me the ability, Jim. When he misses one quality offensive lineman and gets hit a little bit, yeah. the ball flutters. When it's outdoors, it's even more dramatic. Oh, by the way, how about two gloves in 38-degree weather? Jared, please. Him outside. He's got the him. hamburger helper mitts out there. Yeah, yeah. The white mitts make him look even bigger. Too. Dude, him outside is a thing. But they don't play another outdoor game in the in this stretch we're discussing. No. Minnesota's indoors, Dallas is indoors, Denver's indoors. A playoff game at home would Listen, be indoors. We can expedite this conversation. If he goes out and looks like that at home against the Broncos, they lose that game. Jim. Jim. I'll send it hooker doing. Oh, see, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> just no, I know. Because if you That's play next year thing. you play a young QB with no experience. No, you can't like, do it. You can't do it. But it would be an open competition next year if he falters. <laughs>